Muhammad Zuhai Muhammad Said uh, suruh dia join balik recording video ni Okay Alright Now can you see my screen? Guys can you see my screen? Okay All right now. Okay, last uh, this was what we discussed in last class. Uh, last class we talked about Newton's second law, if you remember, where we are still in topic kinetic or particles. In Newton's second law, uh, kinetic or particles, the difference between kinetics and kinematics, what was the difference? The difference was in kinetics we deal with what? If you remember, we deal with? Force. Forces, okay. All right, now. And then when you use Newton's second law, what was the formula? The formula was F equals to MA. And what was the purpose? What did we want to do? We want to find the motion of the mass, the weight. And then what we want to do? We want to find the... What was it? We want to find the... Acceleration. Acceleration. Okay. So basically for Newton's second law, there are three types that you need to understand. Uh, first, the main two types is the rectangular coordinate system, whereby we resolve the question to horizontal and vertical components. And then you also have Newton's second law, which are the non-rectangular system, which is uses the normal and tangential and the radial and transverse. Okay. So uh, last week I told you. Uh, last two weeks, I told you that we will focus on normal and tangential and radial and transverse. But I, however, I will not discuss this today. I will put this for tomorrow's class. For today's class, what I want to discuss with you is the rectangular coordinate system. But not using Newton's second law. We're going to expand it. We're going to use, we're going to learn about work and energy. And then we're going to learn about impulse and momentum. Okay, because uh, in the exam questions or tests or assignment or whatever, usually for the rectangular coordinate system that uses the Newton's second law, F equals to MA, it will relate with work energy and impulse or momentum. Usually it's the combination of those questions. So it's the combination of... F equals to MA, work and energy, and impulse and momentum. So for today's class, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about work and energy method and impulse and momentum method. Is that okay with you? Okay. Okay, all right. Okay. And then, uh, because our class is two hours today, we will have time to do a final exam question together that is related with all these topics. Okay? Okay. Now, hold on. Eh? Let me just... Okay. All right, now. So, um... Let's just get it clear. F equals to MA is the Newton's second law. Eh? Okay, now. Okay, Newton's second law formula is F equals to MA. Okay, okay. When we talk about work and energy, okay, principle of work and energy, the main formula for principle of work energy is this one. T1 plus work equals to T2. So this is what you call the principle of work and energy. So let me add here principle. Principle of work and energy. Are you copying this, guys? Yes. 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 Okay. Now, for principle of linear impulse and momentum, principle of in linear impulse momentum, the formula is MV1. Okay, integration T1, T2, FDT equals to MV2. Okay, all right. Okay, don't worry. Just, um, just um, understand 
that you have two things that we're going to learn today, which is the work energy and principle of linear impulse or momentum. Okay. We're going to look at what is the difference between these two things. Okay. Okay. Now, so, however, even though these two things are different, they are always uh, related with each other. Okay. What I mean is related is the questions are always interrelated with each other. Okay. All right. Now, for work and energy, okay, we, first for today's class, we're going to understand the concept first. Eh? So, for uh, when we develop the principle of work energy, what we mainly want to do is we want to uh, solve problems uh, in, that involve force. Velocity and displacement. Okay, when we use principle of impulse and momentum, we also want to solve problems that involve force, velocity, but the difference is time okay anybody coming in no okay let's go back okay so can you tell me why is the different difference between the principle of work and energy and principle of impulse and momentum can you see the difference where is the difference integration time is less huh the difference is when we want to solve principle of work energy, it involves, ah, it involves displacement. But when we want to solve principle of impulse or momentum, it involves time. Time. Okay. But however, it still is related to force and velocity, both. Okay. So when you get a question in the uh, exams, uh, tests, or whatever, the, uh, um, uh, if the question says use work and energy, make sure you use that method. If the question says use principle of impulse and momentum, use that method. But in case the question does not mention use work and energy, you can also use the basic kinematic equation to solve the same question, the same problem. Understand? Because it does not say use that method. Because force, velocity, and displacement, you can also use what? The basic kinematic equation to solve the problem. Remember the basic kinematic equation? Remember? We have uh, uh, discussed ab about it already. So basically, you have to read the question carefully. If it mentions use work and energy, make sure you use it. But if it doesn't say, you can use either, either method. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, now. So, for now, first, we're going to fo focus for principle of work and energy first. And then, um, because we have two hours class today, we will have time to solve questions related to principle of impulse or momentum. And when you get the combination of these two, you understand it so much better, you can, you can solve uh, more questions by yourselves. Okay, now. Okay, first we will understand about principle of work and energy first, yeah? Okay, all right. We're going to do principle of work and energy first, okay? So basically, uh, when we did, uh, we solve a work, we involve principle of work and energy, uh, what we want to do is, again, we want to solve the force, velocity, and the displacement. But however, before we do that, we must first define what is the work of a force okay first we must define the work of a force by i'm going to draw a diagram to represent it okay let's say we have a particle here okay and then there is a force f okay all right so first before we do this what we want to do is we want to define the work of a force so uh, a force f will do work on a particle when the particle undergoes displacement, 
Okay, this one is the important concept. Eh? A force F, okay, will do work on a particle only when the particle undergoes a displacement in the direction of the force. Okay. Someone just entered our... Okay. All right, now... For example, you are sitting down on your chair right now. Are you doing work? Can you answer me? Yes. Huh? You're doing work? No. <laughs> a force F will only do work when a particle undergoes a displacement. Now, so are you moving right now? Are you sitting on your chair? Are you doing work? No, <laughs> you're not no. doing. You're not no. doing work because there is no displacement involved. Even though you are feeling in your heart that you are studying and you're doing work, but in the concept of dynamics, uh, you are not doing work because there is no displacement involved because you're not moving. Okay, so a force F will only do work when the particle is undergoing a displacement. Okay, for example, let's say I have a bag that I want to carry and put on the table. I am doing work. Okay, but there are two types of work. A work can be positive work and it can be negative work. If I carry a heavy bag and put on top of the table, do you think that is positive work or negative work? Class. Now. If I carry a bag and put it down on the floor, which one is, okay, uh, uh, negative work means it's harder to do, okay? Uh, uh, if I carry a bag from, uh, from the floor and then put it on my table, it means I'm doing negative work. If I take a bag and put on the floor, I'm doing positive work, okay? We, I will explain further how do you identify which one is positive and which one are negative work. Okay? All right. So, uh, we will continue first and then you will understand later. Yeah? There, there are two types of work. Yeah? It can be positive, it can be negative. Okay? All right. So, um, so a force F will do work on a particle only when the particle undergoes a displacement in the direction of the force, okay? For example, if the force F in the figure causes the particle to move along a path, so let's say this particle is moving along a path S from the position R, okay, let's say, let's say this is R and then it moves to another position R prime, okay? it moves to a new position r prime the displacement the displacement okay the displacement this one is the displacement is what we call dr and then the displacement dr is equals to r prime minus r okay the magnitude of dr the magnitude of dr is ds actually okay okay and the uh, and ds is which the, is the length of the differential segments okay along the path okay now if the angle between the tail of dr uh, and f the, the angle is what we call theta okay then the work is defined as a scalar quantity okay all right now a uh, work is defined as du equals to f ds cos theta all right, this is just the main understanding and the fundamental, eh? Okay, now. All right. Okay, for your understanding, okay, uh, the principle of work energy, what is the formula? T1 plus U1 to 2 equals to T2. Okay, this formula, let me write it down again, okay, at the bottom here. T1 
plus u1 to 2 equals to t2. Okay, this formula t1 is kinetic energy. This one is work. This one is also kinetic energy. Kinetic energy T1 is the initial. Kinetic T2, energy T2 is the afterwards. Okay, and this one is the work. Okay, the formula for T1 is 1 over 2 mv1 squared. Okay. The formula for T2 is 1 over 2 mv2 squared. Now, the formula for work depends. Depends on the type of work. It means in one specific question, you can have more than one type of work occurring. Okay? All right. So let's talk about the different types of work. There are a total of one, two, three, four. Four types of works. Okay. Four types of works. Okay. Let's understand the theory first, the concept first. And then after that, we can uh, try a question together. Okay. Are you still with me, guys? Are you copying? Yes. yes. Of course. Okay. All right. Good. Eh? Okay. There are four types of works. Okay. Work number one is work due to variable force. Okay, when you talk about, okay, I'm going to go through each type of work one by one. Eh? So work due to variable force. Okay, work due to variable force occurs when a particle acted upon by the force F undergoes a finite displacement along its path from R1 to R2 or S1 to S2. Okay. So, to determine this, we are going to determine by the integration. Okay. Provided that F and theta can be expressed. Okay. 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 So, work. This is symbol of work. Okay, which is the integration of R2, R1, F, dr, or the integration of S1, S2, F cos theta, dr. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay, now, next we can have work due to uh, a constant force moving along a straight line. Okay. Okay, don't worry. We will discuss further each type of uh, work. Okay, so for this one, the formula is work will be the integration or will be force cos theta S2 minus S1. Okay, all right. This one is if the force, uh, uh, this one, oh, I forgot to write. Okay, if the force F has a constant magnitude and X upon
a constant angle theta from its straight line path okay okay All right next we also have work due to weight okay now formula for work due to weight is u1 u2 equals to negative w delta y and what is delta y delta y is y2 minus y1 okay so for this one let's say we have particle and it's moving due to the weight okay so let's say this is uh, uh um s2 this is s1 okay all right and it's moving due to weight it can move up it can move down depends okay so this one the, the, for this question it is moving upwards so s2 s2 um let's draw the x and y axis to make it understand better so this one will be y2 is final position and and this one will be oops this is y1 okay All right y1 is the initial position y s1 is the initial initial and this one is the final okay for the for this question is moving upward the force is moving upwards it can also be the opposite direction eh? note can also be the opposite direction eh? it means the weight like just now I, I i told you i'm carrying the back up and i'm carrying the back down huh? so it can be in both direction okay but don't worry uh, this one we will discuss uh, uh, in a while later let's just understand the the types of work that can be involved next is work due to due to spring of a force okay so you can also have questions that is work due to spring yeah so the formula for work of a spring is a <laughs> negative one over two k s squared minus one over two k s one square so s is of course the the distance and k is also the st stiffness so this is a spring so let's say it has a force f pushing it so k is the stiffness okay all right <coughs> and this will also be the s and the movement will this one will be ds okay all right so this is the formula okay now are you copying is it okay can i continue yes okay yeah. so now what do you understand when the question is involved principle of work energy the main thing that you have to do is you have to write this formula which is t1 plus work equals to t2 the formula for t1 is straightforward 1 over 2 mv squared t2 is 1 over 2 mv2 squared and then the work you have to identify in the question what is the type of work is the work due to variable force is the work due to constant force in a straight line is the work due to weight and or is the work due to a spring of a force okay do you understand okay can we try one question that is related to work and energy? Can we? Yes. Okay. All right. So just uh, to be clear here, uh, I just add one more information. 
work is positive when the weight is moving what do you think moving upwards or moving downwards class work is positive when weight is moving downwards ah yes good okay that is uh, important information for you eh? all right and then what is k here k is the springs what what is this stiffness and s what is s s is the stretch S T R E uh, S stretch is the stretch S T R E T C H is the stretch or the compression of the spring. Okay, so because the spring it can stretch, it can compress. Okay, all right. There, I add those two information. Have you copied those extra two information? Yes. Okay. And then the other thing that you need to know is another uh, important point. Okay. This is important point number one. Okay, wait. So many one, two, threes. Work is positive when the weight is moving downward. K is the spring stiffness, S is the, is the stretch or the compression of the spring. And the other thing that you need to know is, work is positive when what? Work is positive when the component is the same direction as the displacement. Work is positive when the component is in the same direction as the displacement. Okay, what this means is, let's say you have, you, let's say you have a particle, a box like this, a particle moving downwards. Okay, if the work, if the if the work is in the same direction as the displacement, for this example, the displacement is going where? Is going downwards, right? So it is positive. But if the work is in the opposite direction, then it will be negative. For example, a negative work can be due to friction force because you can also have a the surface can be due to a rough surface, right? If the surface is rough, friction force, this friction force will be what? negative why would it why why will it be negative because it is not in the same direction as the displacement understand understand guys yeah. okay good as long as you understand the concept because uh then again uh why this is important because you need to make sure that you put the negative and positive sign correctly Okay, so work is positive when the component is in the same direction as the displacement. Because the, the displacement is going down, the direction of the displacement is downwards. So the work due to friction force will be negative lah, because it's in the opposite direction. Okay, as long as you understand this concept, then you should be fine. Okay, so can we start and do one question together? Have you finished copying? Yes. Okay, dah makan kuih raya dah? Sudah. Hmm. Sudah, okay, all right. Okay, I hope you are full of energy, eh? We're doing work and energy because uh, you have come back from your, uh, uh, you're, you're now back at the campus, eh? Okay, now we're going to do one question, a few questions together related to work and NGA. Eh? Okay, now. Okay, copy this question. Eh? The 1,750 1, uh, kilogram. We're going to do one question 
here uh, this question first and then after that we're gonna uh, do a final exam question previous final exam question together okay Okay, you're all at the but not all of you are back right it depends on students that are doing severe hmm. and let me see what hmm. it's a pity that we cannot meet each other face to face right i would have loved to meet all of you The COVID cases in Shah Alam is very high, you know. I hope you all are well, eh? Uh, miss. Yeah? Yang weight tu 175 atau 1750? 1750 kilogram. Oh, okay, okay. Seronok pula you panggil I miss. You panggil I miss ya tadi. <laughs> Muda pula I rasa. Tersasul. <laughs> <laughs> tak apa panggil miss pun tak apa. <laughs> It's more polite tau. Kan. Okay, so we're going to do this question first and then one final exam question, okay, for you to understand better. Okay, guys, tell me when you finish copying. Da? Da. 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 Belum. Sejak. Belum. Okay. Um, ambil air ya. Okay. Dah? Dah ke? Dah. Dah, good. Okay. All right. Did you see me getting up just now? No. You were busy copying. Okay. All right, now. 
The 170-50 kilogram automobile shown travels down a 10 degree incline road. Okay, at a speed of 6 meter per second. So it's moving downwards. Yeah. If the driver jams on the brakes, so while this car was moving down, the driver jams the brakes, causing his wheels to lock. Okay, so it means when he jams the brake, it will lock, it will stop. Determine how far S. So basically, it wants to determine S. Okay. Determine how far S. Okay. Let's say this is our S. The tire skid on the road. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the wheels and the road is mu k equals to 0 0.5. Okay. For this question, it did not mention use work or energy method. But we can use work energy method to solve this problem. Again, I explained to you, if in the exam it mentioned use work energy method, make sure you use. But if it did not mention, you can use the basic kinematic equation. Okay, I will show you that we can solve the same question using the basic kinematic equation also. Alright, okay. Now, so, how do you know for this question we must use work energy and not impulse? Can someone tell me why we cannot use linear impulse and momentum? To solve S. Why? Siti, uh, Fatin? 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 Mana tak ada dah Fatin? Hilang dah? Sharifah Shazwani? Yes, why why must we use work energy and not linear impulse and momentum? Shazwani? Yeah. Okay. Shazwani, have a look here. What did I mention? What's the difference between impulse and momentum and work energy? Displacement and time. Ah. So why can't we use this question to solve using impulse and momentum? Uh, why? Because the question does not ask us to calculate time, isn't it? Uh, they yeah. ask us to calculate S. What is S? The displacement, right? It is move. It wants to calculate the displacement, right? So that's why we use what work and energy, isn't that right, Shazwani? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> please, please focus, yeah. <coughs> Okay, you must know that for this question, we cannot use impulse and momentum because they ask us to determine S. When they ask us to determine S, it means they ask us to determine the displacement, the movement, right? So, basically, we need to use what? Work and energy. Okay, this is very important, eh? Important. You must understand why, what is work energy, what is... Um, uh, and what is uh, impulse and momentum? Okay, now, okay, what is the formula for work and energy? Can I have Shafila Akira? What is the work, uh, what is the formula for principle of work energy? D1. Yeah, you want to do. Okay, uh, I haven't finished yet. What is the formula for T1? Okay, all right. So, 1 over 2, what is the mass? What is the mass of the vehicle? Ah, okay. All right. What is the velocity of the vehicle? What is the velocity? What is what is V one? What is V one? Louder. Ah, six meter per second. Okay. How about V two? What is V two?
What do you think V2 is? What is V2? Zero. Yes, yeah, zero. So, so can you calculate for me what is T1? I don't have a calculator with, for, with me, yeah? Ah, no calculator. Can you calculate for me, please? I don't know where I put my calculator. Can you please talk? Berapa? 5250. 5250? Yeah. 5250. Okay. The unit for kinetic energy is joule, eh? Okay, madam. Okay. All right. Now work. Okay. Now next is work. Okay, why T2 is zero is because it breaks, it stop, right? In the question, it says the uh, driver jams on the brake. That's why V2 is equal to zero. When it stops, the velocity becomes, because it, it first uh, moves at a speed of 6 meters per second, and after that, it stops. So that's why the end speed is zero, okay? If the question says it starts from rest, then the initial speed was, it will be zero. But for this question, they didn't say the uh, the the vehicle start from rest, okay? All right. Now, for this question, tell me what type of work is involved in this question? What is causing this vehicle to move down the slope? What type of force is involved now? I, I've discussed with you there are number four types one. of work. Huh? The number one would be due to variable force. Do you have any variable force here? Number three. Number three, yes. Number three is work due to weight. Yes, that's correct. You have a force due to the weight of the vehicle. One more. There is one type of force. This one. This one. Now, do you have a force that is uh, making the vehicle move due to the weight is going down and you also have another force that is causing the vehicle to slow down a bit, which is due to what? This one. Can you see my mouth moving? My, my mouth, blah. my mouse moving, this one. What is this? Ne, 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 ne. Okay, I underline this one. What is this? Friction. Yes. Okay. So those are the two types of force that is causing causing the vehicle, okay, to move down. One is due to the weight. One is due to the coefficient of kinetic friction. Okay. So now we need to draw the free body diagram. Okay. There are marks for the free body diagram. Eh? Okay. So this is your vehicle. Okay. So first you have due to weight. So the weight will be pointing downwards, which is W equals to what? W equals to what? Mg. Mg. Okay, then you also have what? A normal force? N. And you also have a friction force. Now, the friction force will be in which direction? Going down or going up? Going down. Going up. <laughs> up, up. It's going to be in the opposite direction. So the friction force, friction force will be going upwards. And the friction force, the formula, what is what? Mu K. Mu K. Multiply by. Don't N. forget. Multiply by. N. N. Okay. So now. Okay. So you have two types of force. Okay. Let's do the first one. Force, uh, let's do the first one. Force due to weight, eh? Now, do you remember the formula for force due to weight? The work due to weight? Sorry. Force due to weight. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm supposed to write what? I'm supposed to write work due to weight now so the work due to weight is what what is the formula 
negatif W delta Y. Okay, negative W delta Y. What is negative W is mg. Now, what is delta Y? Is Y2 minus Y1. Okay, now. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, now. So, this is our particle, the car. Eh? This one is our initial position. Am I right? And this one? Let's say it, it stops here. This is our final position. So how do you, let's say our final position is here lah, at the end here lah, senang, S2. Okay. All right. Now, what is Y, where, where will be Y2? Okay. So this one will be what? This one will be our Y1. And where is our Y2? At the bottom here, right? This one is our Y2. Okay, now this is 10. 10 degrees. And this is our S. Okay, now. What is our mass? Our mass is? I forgot our mass is what? 1750 and then our g is 9.81 now what is y2 how do you get y2 y2 will be what medium nak tanya sikit boleh boleh ah uh, kan yang dalam apa equation yang t1 dengan t2 tu kan 1 per 2 mv squared kan yang squared tu kita tak payah kira kan eh kena kena is this uh, forgot oh. Okay, ni ini dah multi, have you multiplied this by squared? Ke belum. Oh. Okay, so what is the answer? 31500. Okay. Sorry eh. You have to multiply squared. Don't forget the formula is 1 over 2 m mv squared. Other squared. Okay? Thank you for correcting me eh. I don't have a calculator with me okay dah i'm relying on your answer okay now kita kembali ke sini eh okay now what what is y2 what is y1 this is y1 right so how do you get y1 cos or sin huh spike guys this is s this is y this is theta Sine or cos? Sine. Okay. Sine 10 degrees. Sign. Kita Sign. dapat apa? Y1 over S, right? So what is Y1? S sine 10. Am I right? Hello? Do you understand? Yes. Okay, so what is Y2 then? Yang bottom sekali ni, Y2. So what is Y2? Zero. Ah, zero. So Y2 is zero minus minus apa? S sin S sin 10. 10. Ah. So what do you think? Negative multiply by negative dia jadi? Positive. Okay. Can you please multiply for me? 1750 multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by sin 10. The papa? What do you get? Is someone using a calculator? 1750 multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by sine 10. What do you get? Eh, kenapa senyap ah?
Iqbal, can you give me the answer? Iqbal? Dah tak ada dah Iqbal? Rizwan? Ada, ada. Ah, what is the answer? Sekejap uh, main, saya kira dulu. Apa lambat sangat ni? Santan. Saya dapat 2981. Okay. 2981, don't forget the word S. Tapi okay. tak, tak, tak pasti lah betul ke tidak. Sama-sama. <laughs> <sama. laughs> kenapa tak pasti? You're just using a calculator to type 1750 multiply by 9.81 Multiply by sin 10. That's all. Mesti lah. <laughs> okay. Be confident, okay? Okay. Alright. Okay. Yang lain dapat sama kan? Okay, now. The next is work due to. What was the other one? Friction. Force. Because this, this friction force is slowing down the car. Okay. So what is the formula for the friction force? is mu k n and because this is work you must multiply by s don't forget to multiply by s okay right now so work is uh, uh friction force is uh, mu k multiplied by normal force multiplied by s now uh, what we want to do is we want to find s right this is what we want to find Okay, now, so back to mu k. Mu k is the coefficient of kinetic friction. What is the coefficient of kinetic friction given in the question? 0 0.5. Okay, all right, please, I need you to speed up. Eh? Okay, and n multiplied by s. Okay, now, now we need to find n. How are you going to find n? Now, what you need to do is you need to find n by using uh, the formula uh apa uh, uh fn equals to zero so fn is in this direction so what it means is what we need to do is we need to resolve what our weight in that direction am i right now yes. when you resolve the weight in that direction what would it be w what cos or sine cos or sine W cos theta. Am I right? Class, right now, your N force is in this direction. What you want to do is, you want to resolve your weight in the same direction as the normal force. So your weight, when you resolve it in that direction, it will be W cos theta. Do you understand? We have gone through this, right? Class, yes. I need you to yes. respond. Okay. Yes. So, first, so you have N, it will be positive in that direction, minus W cos theta equals to zero because we need to find N. Now, N minus Mg cos theta equals to zero. So, N equals to Mg cos theta. So, what is our M? 1750 times G 9.81. Times cos 10 degrees. So what is the answer? Ni tolong lah. You boleh tekan calculator kan correctly? I'm sure you can can use the calculator and uh, it will be correct. What is it? 1750 times 9.81 times cos 10 degrees. What do you get? Satu enam sembilan kosong enam. Betul. Kosong enam poin enam enam sembilan. Okay, tujuh lah. Ah, tujuh. Okay, alright. So we have got our n. So it will be zero point five times one six nine zero six point seven s. Okay, can you please multiply by zero point five? Dapat berapa? Lapan empat lima tiga. Again, again. Eight four. Eight five three. Four. Five three. 
53 s okay good okay now let's put back in our main formula for work energy our main formula for work energy what is it okay let's put all the correct information t1 plus work equals to t2 what is our t1 T1 is 31,000. Okay, joule, now, joule. all right. Now, the work we have, we have two work, one due to weight. Okay, this work, this weight is going downhill, so it's positive work, right? So it's 2, 1. Sorry, I keep 2, sorry, 2, 9. 8, 1, S. Now, the friction force, it is in the opposite direction of the... Uh, displacement. So the friction force should be negative or positive? This one is in the opposite direction. Negative. Of displacement. So when it's in the opposite direction of the displacement, it should be negative. 8453S equals to T2 is 0. So can you calculate for me what is S? Lima point tujuh enam. Yes, that's correct. You need meters, eh? Okay, good. Now, that is how you solve problems related to the displacement using work energy. But I did mention to you just now, you can also solve the same problem using the using Newton's second law and the basic kinematic equation now uh, madam yes uh, saya tak faham yang tu yang nak tolak 8453 tu okay now this friction force is in the opposite direction of the displacement the car is moving down the hill right ah uh, yeah because it is in the opposite direction so you must minus oh Ah, uh, because I have mentioned here, what did I mention here? This work is positive when the component is in the same direction as the displacement. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, because why the weight is positive? Because it is in the same direction, the weight is going down, right? It's the same direction as the displacement. That's why the weight is positive. But for the friction force, because it's in the opposite direction, that's why you need to put a negative sign here. Oh. Understand? Fun, so fun. what it means is when you get a question that is related to work energy, first you understand that you have to use the principle of work energy. You have to find T1, T2. T1 in T2 is what? It's the kinetic energy. Okay. And then after that, you must identify what is the work. Okay, the work can be positive work, it can be negative work. Okay, so for this question, there are only two types of work involved. One is the work due to the weight and the other one is work due to the friction force. Uh, the work due to the weight, you get positive because it is in the same direction. But for the friction work, because it's in the opposite direction, you have to put the negative sign. Okay, but don't forget, both of this work has to have an S. So, and then for the friction force, that's why you add an S. Okay, any other questions? Thank you, madam. Okay. All right. Now, let's say for this question, we want to use the basic kinematic equation. We don't want to use work energy. We can also use the, because the acceleration is constant, we can use this formula. Okay. All right. Now, uh, we can use this formula. V squared equals to V not squared plus 2A S minus S not. Okay, now. Now, for V squared, because this is the final V, we know this is 0. For the initial V, we know it is 6. Now, acceleration, we don't know. And then for the S, we can find S. Um... 
uh, the initial S is what we want to find. Uh, uh, the initial S is what we want to find. And we can assume the original S, S is zero, start from zero. So basically what we need to find is we need to find the acceleration. And the acceleration, how can we find the acceleration? How do you want to find the acceleration? You can find the acceleration using Newton's second law. F equals to MA. Remember, I have taught you, you can find uh, the acceleration using the Newton second law formula. So you find the acceleration using the Newton second law formula. You put it in this kinematic equation and then you can find S. So that is very simple. Eh? It's actually more straightforward and more simple to do. But in case the question tells you use work energy, this is the method. But you will get the same answer. Okay. Remember how do we do the form? Uh, the how we do uh, f equals to m a. Now, if you want to use f equals to m a, you your s is in which in this in which direction? Your s is in this direction, right? So what it means is you need to solve f in that direction. So you do f positive in this direction equals to m a s okay so it's very simple what you need to do is since it is in that direction your weight you need to resolve in that direction when you resolve your weight in the s direction it will be w sine theta okay All right so if we go back here oops if we go back here okay it will be w sine theta Okay, and don't forget you need to minus the uh, friction force that you have calculated. What, what is the friction force you've calculated? 8453. 8453S equals to MAS. So this is MA, sorry, MG sine theta minus 8, 8, uh, 8, 4, 53s equals to m a s. Sorry, this is Newton's second law, so we don't have an s. Okay. Okay. M m a s. Okay. So this m will be one seven five zero times nine point eight one times sin ten degrees. Minus 8453 equals to MAS. So from here, you can calculate as the acceleration. So the acceleration that you will get is negative 3.127 meter per second squared. So what you do is you just put it in this formula here and you will get S. And the answer for S, you will get the same, which is S equals to 5.76, uh, 5 I think meters so what i'm trying to say to you for this question you can also use the basic kinematic equation and newton's second law to solve the same problem okay but however for today's class what we want to do is we want to focus on solving this problem using using what work and energy method okay is that fine guys are you okay okay okay, okay. all right okay can we continue? Sure. Good. Sure. Okay, now. We're going to continue. Eh? Okay, we're going to continue. So, what we're going to continue is we're going to uh, try the second method. This one, now, okay. Now deep breaths, eh? I have a uh, deep breath, okay. Relax, okay. Jangan stress, okay. All right. Now, um, the se the second thing is where what we're gonna learn today is the principle of impulse and momentum. Okay. Now, so I have given you the formula for principle of linear in linear impulse momentum. Okay, all right. So basically, what is the purpose? What we want to do? 
for principle of linear impulse momentum, basically what we want to do is we want to solve problem that involve force, velocity and time. Okay, Clark, guys, are you okay? Okay. Okay. MV1 is the initial momentum. Like, is the initial... MV1 is for initial momentum. Okay. Don't get confused, eh? What is the difference between the formula T1? T1 is the kinetic energy. It is 1 over 2 MV1. Okay, all right, let me just write this down maybe properly. MV1 plus T1, T2, FDT equals to MV2. Okay, this one is what you call the initial momentum. This one is what you call the final momentum. Okay, and this one is what you call the impulse okay so basically uh, another simplified way of writing the formula is mv1 plus impulse 1 to 2 equals to mv2 so this is the this is the uh, basic formula lah. okay impulse 1 to 2 just now was work we use the symbol u now impulse is 1 to 2 okay all right Okay, um, I think for this one, principle of linear impulse momentum, we can go straight to a question. Can we do that? Because it's, uh, it's actually much more easier than work. Can we do that? Mm. Uh, yes. <laughs> Kenapa you punya, mm, ah, yes. <laughs> Panjang you punya tu. Okay, so basically for linear impulse momentum is very simple. The initial momentum, the formula is just the mass multiplied by the velocity. The final momentum is just the mass multiplied by the velocity. And the impulse is just uh, the force. But don't forget multiplied by the, uh, it must be the integration within the time. Okay, so uh, we, let's do one question. You will understand better how uh, uh, about it. Okay, can we can we proceed? Are you okay, guys? I'm okay. Okay, okay. the hundred kg crate shown. Okay, copy. Yeah, don't worry, guys. The hundred kg crate shown. Okay. Uh. Okay. You can ask me any questions you like, huh? Don't, uh, there's ne never a wrong question, eh? Okay, even though the question that you ask, you feel is very uh, silly or stupid, it's okay. You can ask me anything. Okay, it's okay. Don't, don't, apa? Uh, don't feel uh, shy or whatever lah. Okay, don't, don't feel scared, eh? If if you have difficulty of understanding the topic, also you want me to uh, clarify to you, also can. Okay. Okay. I want all of you to score very well in your test one. Eh? That is my aim. Eh?
Okay, let's do this quickly. Have you finished copying? Not yet. Okay. Done? Done? Have you eaten? Have you had your breakfast? Lunch? Not yet. Allah, kesiannya. Okay, sikit je lagi. After that, you can have your lunch, ya? Yeah? Okay, then, have you finished copying? Yes. Okay, now. The 100 kilogram crate is shown is originally at rest. So, originally is at rest on a smooth horizontal surface. So, the surface is smooth, eh? The surface is smooth. It means there's no friction. Lah. If a towing force of 200 Newton, so there is a force of 200 newton acting at an angle of 45 degrees is applied for 10 seconds okay determine the final velocity and the normal force which the surface exert on the crate during the time interval so for this question so for this question they ask you to find the uh, velocity the final velocity it means they ask you to find v2 and then they ask you to find n Okay, now for this question, I want you to use the impulse or momentum method. Okay, so for this question, I want you to use the impulse or momentum method. Why? Because the question is, they give us the time, T. Okay, now, so for this question, what is the formula for impulse or momentum method? What is the formula? MV1 plus impulse 1 to 2 equals to MV2. Okay, let's find MV1 first. What is MV1, guys? Hello? What is MV1? M is the mass, 100. What is V1? Now, what is V1, guys? The 100 kilogram crate shown is originally at rest. So what is V1? Zero. Ah, zero. So multiply by zero. So the answer is zero. You need to write this down. Eh? If it's equals to zero, you will get marks. Now, what is V2? V2 is what we want to find. So it will be 100 times V2. So this is what we want to find. Okay, now let's do the impulse. Okay. Okay, how are we going to do the impulse? Okay, now. Okay. How are we going to do the impulse? Okay. Now, what is impulse just now? What did I mention? Okay, impulse. Impulse is what? Is, is the momentum of the particle at a time. Okay, impulse is the momentum of the particle at a time now is the momentum of the particle at the time okay all right so now so what what do you think what is the force involved in this question tell me the force involved in this question what are the types of force involved in this question Class, there is one type of force involved in this question. What is it? Towing force. Yes, the towing force only. Okay, all right. So what is the towing force? 200? 200 Newton. 200 Newton. Okay, that is correct. Okay, now. So the impulse. 
one to two equals to okay now the direction of the the direction of the towing force is at a slanting of 45 degrees now the this the you it has to be in the direction of the movement so you need to resolve it so how do you resolve it it will be what 200 cos or sine class cos or sine cos huh sine Okay, for this question, you need to resolve it in both direction. One in cos direction, one in sine direction. But how do you know which one you want to resolve in cos or do you need to resolve in sine? Okay, have a look. Eh? Okay, let me, if, if this one is cos, if you resolve in sine, it will be upwards, right? Okay, now you need to understand this clearly there are two types of question they ask you here one is the velocity one is the normal force okay so for 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 this question the impulse you have to do it in two direction one is in the one is in the positive in the x direction one in the other impulse is in positive in the upwards direction okay now this one has to be done separately okay let let us do separately yeah okay uh let's do the impulse in the uh in the in the x direction first yeah okay mv1 plus impulse one to two equals to mv2 this one let's us do in this direction first Okay, so this one, MV1 will be zero. Okay, so if it is in the uh, horizontal direction, it will be what? 200 what? 200 cos? Cos. 45. 45. And we must not forget, must multiply by the time. What is the time? 10. 10. Equals to? Equals to 100 V2. Ah, equals 200 V2. So from this question, what can we get? From this equation, what can we get? V2. Yes, you can get V2. So what is the answer? What is the answer for V2? 14. Yes, that's correct. 14.14. Yeah, 14.14 meter per second. Okay. Now, next is we do the impulse in the vertical direction. Same formula, but we're only considering it in the vertical direction. You cannot combine, eh? Okay. So for the vertical direction, MV1 is still zero. Okay. So in the vertical direction, what do you have? 200 sine 45. Sine. 200 sine 45. Okay. Multiply by? Multiply by what? Ten. The time. 10. Okay, there is one more force you're missing in the vertical direction. What do you think it is? W. Yes, w. W. Understand? So you have to consider everything that is in that direction. Okay? Okay, now. Where are we? Okay, now. So the weight... What would the weight be? The weight will be negative, right? Negative. It will be m g multiplied by ten also equals to. Now, do you have any velocity in the vertical direction? Class, do you have the velocity in in, in vertical direction? The movement of the velocity is in the horizontal direction only right 
So for the vertical direction component, you do not have MV. So this one will be equal to zero. Siapa yang tak faham? Who doesn't understand that? Saya, Madam. Okay. Now, the velocity of this uh, crate is moving in what direction? This crate. In the horizontal direction, right? The velocity, right? Uh, yes. Ah, is it moving in upward direction? No. No. So that's why for the vertical component direction equation, mv2 is also equal to zero. Do you understand? Both velocity are zero. This will be zero. This one also be zero. Okay. okay. All right. But you must not forget. You must include the weight. Okay. So this one will be 200. Okay, we are missing something here. Why are we missing something here? What do you think we are missing here? This one, N, right? What is N? N? What is N. our N? What is our A? Wait. Wait. Nine, eight, one. This one, this one. We have what? N and minus mg. So you have a you forgot we have we forgot to put the normal force n, right? So the normal force n will equal to what? Because what is our main purpose? We want to find N, right? Equal to MG. So, what is our M? What is our G? So we can find N. Let me draw for you to make you understand. This is 981, right? So what is our N? If you calculate N, what do you get? What do you get for N? We are missing something, huh? Wait, wait. Let me wrap this one. Yep. Sorry, let me apologize. 100 times, uh, okay, let me apologize. This is M, MG, so we, uh, 100 times 98, 1 times 10. Okay, and you also have uh, uh, a normal force, right? N times 10, ah. Okay, that was my mistake. 
Tertinggal pula. Plus. Okay, please correct it eh. Plus N times 10. Okay. Okay. Alright, look back at the diagram. Okay. There's a force here, was 200. So you resolve going up, you dapat apa? 200 sine 45. So for this question, ada one due to weight, one due to normal force, and the other one due to the towing force. So how many forces you have? One, two, and three. Okay, siapa tak faham? Sorry, I tergesa-gesa type tadi, I didn't realize it. So how many forces involved in the vertical direction class? Based on this diagram? How many forces involved, class? Can you see there are three forces involved? Tiga. Ah, one and due to the towing force, one due to the normal force, and one due to the weight. And the only one that is due to the weight, we put negative. Why? Because it is in the... Because we have assumed positive going vertical. Understand? Understand, class? Uh, you have any questions? Yes. Understand? Understand. 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 Yes. Sorry for my mistakes yes. tadi eh. I for, uh, tertinggal ada one, two, three. Uh, okay. This is due to the weight. This one is due to the normal force. And this one is due to the towing force. So from here, you can find the normal force. So what is the answer for the normal force? 839.5. Ah, betul. That's correct. Okay, now. Kalau ambil 840 boleh? Boleh. Okay. Okay, let's go. Okay, guys. So... I can tell you again, for this question, if you do not want to use the impulse momentum method, you can also solve it using the basic kinematic equation. Okay? All right? Okay. So, now, do you understand now? Now, what I'm going to do to you now is I'm going to share with you through uh, WhatsApp, uh, no, through uh, Telegram, one final exam question that has a combination of work energy and impulse and momentum. And then you're going to try to solve this, the question using both methods. Okay? You're going to read the question and you're going to see that the question involves both methods. Okay? And it involves the... Red, it still involves the rectangular coordinate system where uh, impulse, uh, related to impulse. Okay, we're not doing normal and tangential uh, transverse. We're not doing that. Okay, All right now, usually students' question that is related to principle of impulse, impulse and momentum is very easy and straightforward. They can easily score because they just need to find the initial momentum. They need to find what is the impulse and final momentum. Usually what the student miss is they forget to multiply the formula for what? impulse with with the uh, with the time now if you notice the difference between uh the work energy the impulse they multiply 10 10 is the time and if you look at the uh, formula for work energy they multiply by s s is the displacement that is the difference understand yes ah uh, okay all right now Okay, I'm going to share with you with one question. I want you to, to try to do it by today straight away and then can discuss lah the answer. I want you to have a feel of the final exam questions so that you will prepare yourself for your upcoming test. Okay, do you anybody have any other questions they would like to ask me? Okay, we are actually... Um, I At first, I was worried that I'm... Uh, that we need... Um, um, that we might um, be uh, unable to finish on time. But I have tried uh, a method to speed up your understanding 
to make it easier for you. So that's why I I started with work energy and impulse and momentum first. Then uh, next class, what I will, I'll do is, is, is the non-rectangular system for Newton's second law. Okay, class? Is that okay? Okay. Okay, now, do you think you can try that question? I'm gonna give, I'm gonna send to you the question through through apa? through Telegram. Can you please try as soon as possible and update me? Class, hello. Are you okay, guys? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. This week is gonna be a week with a lot of questions. Uh, that we're gonna do so because I really want you to prepare for your test because I'm I believe after that you have another week two weeks holiday. Eh? I don't know. Eh? Week apa cuti apa? Hari Gawai. Gawai. Ha. So uh, Henry Kana, are you going back? Masa di college. Okay. I'm sorry you cannot celebrate, but um. <laughs> Uh, you can celebrate with me with uh, practicing a lot of questions together. Eh? <laughs> okay. All right. So I will stop my video. Any other questions that you would like to ask? Okay. I just like you to bear in mind. Eh? This question is uh, the question that we did is straightforward. Eh? If you notice, it's just uh, uh, what do you call uh, a crate moving in a straight line. Okay, you can have also uh, questions that have spring. You can also have questions that is they have that have cables. So bear in mind if ada cable macam mana, ada spring macam mana. Okay, but the concept is the same. As long as you know how to draw the free body diagram, you should be fine. But the best thing is for you to to practice other types of questions. Okay, class, can we stop now, or is does anybody have uh something that they would like to ask anybody would like to ask something before we stop anybody no no Nor Hidayatul, are you okay? Okay, Ada. Um, Kairunas, are you okay, Kairunas? Are you okay? Amir Fawaz, are you okay? Okay, Ada. Okay, good. Okay, but can you please fill in the attendance after class using Avum system? Okay, right. Uh, by your heart, what you understand in today's class uh what concept you understand uh from your heart okay write what you understand and then just write it down in the albums so i'm gonna stop the class uh recording eh? so for those who would like to uh repeat the recording uh i will share to you in the class in a while okay, okay no.